Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. We are part of a worldwide organization of Rotarians. That's what we call ourselves. 1.2 million people in 36,000 clubs around the world. Add in a bunch of other cool folks who belong to Rotaract and Interact, and you end up with just this huge number of folks who are working to make a difference in the lives of others. And to that end, we love sharing stories that can inspire you to see the world in new ways and hear about the good that is happening in all sorts of different places. Today, we are going to hear about a project that, that had its, its uh, origins here in District 5170. Uh, this is the district that includes the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley, for which we are a proud part. And uh, you are going to hear from two folks. First, you're going to hear from Sue. Sue McKinney is one of the co-founders of the Rotary Vietnam Project of our district. She has lived in Vietnam for 27 years and is one of those people who can say, this is how this can work all the better in this environment. The benefits of connecting with someone who knows the, knows the ground, shall we say. Our other speaker is Catherine. And Catherine Lim is a high school student here in the Bay Area, and she is the International Outreach Officer for the Rotary Vietnam Project, and will be telling us more about its connections to Interact, and let us, let us note that District 5170 has the biggest, most vibrant Interact uh, membership in the entire world. Thank you very much. With that, I want to hand it over to Catherine to get things going. Catherine, Sue, we are so excited to have you with us. Catherine, launch. Thank you so much once again for letting us present. So um, yeah, this is our project, the Rotary Vietnam Project. And I'm gonna start off by talking a bit about who we are. So we are a group of Rotarians and Thai schoolers who in partnership with the Pacific Lynx Foundation and Rotary clubs around the world, work towards fighting human trafficking by providing educational scholarships to Vietnamese youth who are at risk of being trafficked. Here's our, I guess our origin story. Um, it began back in 2015 when a team of four interactors, two Ryla graduates and Rotaractors, five Rotarians and a Rotarian magazine reporter traveled to Vietnam and distributed 2,400 soccer balls to schools, orphanages, and youth soccer teams. Um, and from this, uh, RVP was born. Here are our board of advisors, which include um, Jamie Sue, who's with us today, Avis, um, the past district governor, Arlie Marley, Nick, Marianne, and Han. And under their supervision, our interact volunteers, myself included, um, we come from District 5170 and beyond. We help uh, drive this project. Um, and interact students from District 5170 and beyond do much of the work to help organize events and raise awareness. Our committee typically consists of 20 or more interactors plus our Rotary advisors. We've regularly collaborated with the Fort Bragg Interact Club in District 5130, um, as well as the Oakdale Interact Club in District 5220. Two, two interactors from Oakdale even um, traveled with us on our 2018 service trip to Vietnam, which we'll get into a little later, uh, actually right now. And through the years, we've been we've managed to go on, go on many service trips, and we brought along many Rotarians and students from RVP. Our team has presented to our project to thousands of Rotarians at the international conventions in Seoul, Toronto, and Atlanta. And for these service trips, we raise our own expenses. They are not taken out of any of the scholarship donations. In addition, we have a summer camp that we participate in in a normal year every July in Vietnam. And you can see the last year we did that in July of 2019. In the upper right, you see the 720 girls that went through the summer camp that year. And our teams teach various life skill wor workshops like uh, English language, community building. And on our next slide, you'll see one of our Rotarians teaching uh, self-defense to the girls. We don't go empty handed. We collect rotary t-shirts from events that are outdated that have already happened and distribute hundreds of t-shirts to the girls throughout the camp. These girls are so poor that even the addition of one t-shirt 
is a great addition to their wardrobe and it does our hearts good to see those t-shirts popping up as the days of summer camp go by. Um, now that you know who we are as well as our, the service trips that we've taken in the past, I'd like to talk a bit about what we've done for our cause. So we have sponsored uh, over $213,250 in scholarships, which help cover tuition, supplies, uh, such as books and uniform, and health insurance for the Vietnamese girls so that they can continue to pursue their education. Sometimes that scholarship also means tablets and bicycles as well, uh, anything to help them continue their education. In addition to that, we've also distributed over 2,700 soccer balls. These soccer balls are ultra durable. And so by providing them to underprivileged communities, we hope that they'll be able to continue to engage in the power of play for a long time. And although we couldn't travel to Vietnam this past summer, um, the Rotary Vietnam Project donated $80,000 to fund top students for intensive English study. And this is really important to these students because fluency in English is often an, an, an essential skill, um, which will help them land good jobs after school. In 2020, we also funded 69 students for an 11 week English camp, which was taught by native students. In the camp, there were also many company site visits to help them explore career opportunities. And our partner in, in Vietnam, the Pacific Links Foundation, have demonstrated the sustainability and impact of the educational sponsorship program with over 92% of their students either going on to higher education or getting a real job in, in industry rather than stopping after high school. Founded in 2001, they have had a long experience in helping the youth of Vietnam. Here are some fundraisers that we held um, uh, last year. We had a movie night for Crazy Rich Asians and a boba fundraiser at Yucha. We also had a paint and sip fundraiser and also held uh, an event for the Vietnamese holiday, the Mid-Autumn Festival. So this is really how we've managed to engage our local um, interact community. And throughout the years, we have managed to fundraise over $225,400 for RVP. Um, this, in addition, from, in addition to fundraisers, comes from the strong support and grants from our Rotary Clubs uh, from our district and beyond. We also have a generous donor who matches all of our fundraising, and this fundraising has enabled us to apply for two global grants from the Rotary, from the Rotary Foundation, which Sue will talk about now. As many of you know, in order to apply for a global grant, you must partner with a non-US Rotary Club. And we're fortunate to have partnered with the Rotary Club of Queenstown in Singapore, and also the Rotary Club of Colombo in Sri Lanka. And on the next slide, I can show you that two of our Rotarians, myself and Avis Legron, traveled to Sri Lanka to be at their foundation dinner. And we're so happy to announce that that global grant was approved by the Rotary Foundation, who will be matching $50,000 for us. And our second global grant with Queenstown is uh, under consideration for the next Rotary year. All right, and now I'll be talking about uh, what we've done during this strange COVID time, how we've transitioned, and also some of our future plans. Um, so the one of the main ways that we have gone about contributing service during COVID-19 with everything being online has been the Pacific Links English Conversation Tutoring Program. Um, and this is a program where people can tutor Vietnamese youth in speaking and writing English. And this all takes place online. RVP, along with Pacific Links, has, keeping has, taken, has kept track of the service hours. And um, Rotarians are actually able to join and help tutor these students. So if that's something you're interested, I highly encourage it. Um, I was actually involved in this program. And it's very flexible. You don't need any prior training because it's all conversational. Another way that Rotarians can get involved is by uh, helping to sponsor a tutor. Um, 
and you can actually you can decide the rate but just uh example might be around 25 dollars for 10 hours and again because we have a matching donor um any contribution that you make to our cause gets amplified and really helps us out a lot here are some um screenshots i guess of our tutors from this past year and pacific links uh, English tutoring is, again, it's all online, it's held on Zoom, and it's really easy to access and it's done virtual. Um, this has been uh, one way that many interactors have gotten involved with the Road to Vietnam project, especially during COVID when everything has to be online. And here's our fundraising plan that we followed this year and plan to continue following. Um, start off with, we have four divisions, the Northern, Eastern, Southern, and Western fundraiser, fund, sorry, Western divisions. And each division has a fundraising coordinator, which helps organize fundraisers in their areas. Um, we've also applied to grants and scholarships, um, which have helped us provide scholarships to Vietnamese youth at risk, which Sue just talked about. Um, we also, we also uh, have looked into selling merch. And in previous years, we have managed to sell, sell, sell bamboo straws in order to help uh, raise money. And lastly, we have many ideas for um, events, online events. Um, but in the past, we have held an RVP gala, which, have, which has been great for raising money and also uh, involving the community. So in our next slide, we will be showing some valuable information that you can take a picture of or screenshot. But because this is a recording, you can just pause the video and visit our links. Uh, we have our Instagram, our Facebook, and our website. Do you want to? And this is my favorite photo from Vietnam that really encaptures the inspiration and the ingenuity of the Vietnamese people. So if you need to practice your math problems on a Sunday and you can't get to the blackboard, you can call on your friendly neighborhood water buffalo to give you a hand. And now we'd love to entertain your questions. Fantastic and amazing picture for sure. All right, so an introduction first. Uh, thank you very much, Catherine and Sue, for the talk. We have questions lining up for you. Uh, and just so you know who, who we have on the call, uh, in, in Georgia, we have Chanel, who says hello. hello. Uh, here in California, we have Afra. Uh, and in Oregon, we have Heather. My name is Rushton, and we will jump into the questions. Afra, start us off with your question. Go ahead and unmute and ask. Sure, first, thank you so much for that presentation, so thorough. Um, so my first question is about the virtual tutoring. Um, I have a long background in teaching English as a second language. Um, I've never done it virtually though. I've always moved to wherever I need to go and, and with the people. So my question is about the accessibility. I would think sometimes if, if you're doing virtual, you the Vietnamese students may not have access to Wi-Fi, access to computers. Does that cause any issue for setting up your virtual tutoring programs? Right, that's true. But I think um, Pacific Links has managed to provide a lot of like these, necess these necessities, especially with education. Uh, like we mentioned, they help donate tablets and things like that. And it is true that sometimes like there are problems with internet connection. Like I remember this one time I was teaching and there was a storm. So that had problems with cutting in and out. But in the end, these Vietnamese students are very, very committed students and learners. And I think that because of that, any help that we do give them actually goes a really long way. And um, by participating in this program, you're giving them the opportunity to practice their conversational English. And that to me is really the most important part of the program even if they're a little like pitches, it's just a great way for them to practice their English. Thank you. Good deal, Chanel, I think you have the next question. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for all of the information. So because this presentation is about human trafficking in Vietnam, how prevalent is the issue over there? 
It's extremely prevalent and uh, consider the geographic location of Vietnam. So to the east, to, excuse me, to the west of Vietnam, there's a shared border with Cambodia that has had a sex trafficking industry for generations. But interestingly, the shared border on the north with China, after generations of China having a one child kill the girl baby policy, um, there is such a profound gender imbalance that there are 35 million men in China that will never have a wife. So if you are the well-to-do upper middle class family with your one treasured adult son, you cannot find a bride for your son to marry. So you're not going to have a grandchild, which is anathema in Asian culture. So the trafficker comes along and offers you the young Vietnamese girl as the quote unquote bride for your family to produce your grandchild, at which point when she does that, she's an almost more valuable commodity to be sold on to the next family to do that again and yet again. So not only is it enforced sexual servitude, it's enforced surrogacy, and then the girls are ripped apart from their babies. So the, the strength of prevention by keeping girls in school and educating them as to the tricks of traffickers is extremely important. And our partner in Vietnam, Pacific Links, has a hotline that the girls can call at any time and they will check out whether a job offer is a legitimate job offer or not. And so there, there's a support system for the girls. Great That's question. Sue, so in, in talking about setting up that system that allows, um, essentially allows a team to double check the kinds of things that are being offered to girls there. Is that is that a part of what the Rotary Project has been about, or did Rotary partner with the organization that does that? Well, the, the organization exists independently. And as the Rotarian living in Vietnam for many years, I had the chance to get to know a number of organizations. And I was so very impressed with the transparency of and the commitment of the Pacific Lynx organization in Vietnam. Plus, they're a registered 501c3 in California. So um, their transparency, they've been uh, uh, audited by Vanguard Charities out of New York, for example. So it's so very good to know exactly where the money goes. And because I've lived there, I can see the impact of, of what they are doing. And the first year that the Rotarians participated in the summer camp, we were told to just be very much aware that there might be uh, government uh, representatives walking through the summer camp from time to time to see what we were doing. And that first year, we were very much um, under the microscope. And then the word filtered back later that those rotary people were okay, you can bring more of them. And in our opening ceremonies now uh, at the summer camp, the government officials are there and, oh, hi, nice to see you again. And, and you see some of the same faces year after year. And it's a real partnership. Nice. Heather, I know you have a question to follow up uh, on, on some of the training that, that we talked about. Yes, thank you both so much for such important work that you're doing. I'm really, really grateful to hear about this and how comprehensive it is. In addition to the English language tutoring, are there peer-to-peer -peer opportunities for interactors or rotor actors to work with the girls on teaching them about some of these tricks that the traffickers use and, and engage with them on that side of things? Well, in the summer camp, in person, absolutely. And the interactors that we take over, they generally devise their own workshop that they want to give and they develop it. And it, what you mentioned about peer-to-peer, -peer, the message is uh, so much more well-received, uh, the young people to the young people, but that's a two-way street. So our interactors are importing uh, life skills and the impressions of uh, American students, but they're also learning from the Vietnamese students. They learned at summer camp one year that a girl had to drop out 
right before summer camp was due to start. And they, we only found out later that the reason she didn't come was she'd broken one of her rubber flip-flops. And her family literally did not have $1 to buy her another pair of sandals. And they were too embarrassed to let her go to summer camp without a pair of sandals. Summer camp is the first time some of those girls have ever been away from their village, ever been on a bus. So the, the scope of, of what they learn um, is tremendous. And, and our students learning that not having $1 to buy a pair of sandals has a great impact on them. And we've, we've done our best to ensure that that never happens again. Catherine, I'm interested to know what kinds of stories the interactors bring back that allow the American students to learn from the from the experiences of the Vietnamese students. I mean, obviously, you know, you know, like what Sue just said is so important, right? That that sense of of valuing what you have. But I'm sure there are also a lot of life lessons that come from understanding what it is that that the girls talk about. And what kinds of things seem to be strengths for them? What what kinds of things do you know about in terms of how the interactors kind of come back having learned? Actually, unfortunately, because COVID, um, this like past year and this year as well, we will not be able to go on our service trip. But I can only imagine. I mean, these are these are uh, girls um, our age. You know, they could be our peers, except for the fact they they live in Vietnam. And they are facing all of these hardships and complications. And it's it's kind of, it's almost, it makes me feel really like a lot of empathy because I um, I get to live in the Bay Area, one of the <laughs> richest parts of the world and have access to all these great educational uh, opportunities. And I hope that through the work that we do at Rotary Vietnam Project, um, we can really help them, I guess, help with the equality a bit more because just for the fact that they, that they were born in Vietnam, they don't have access to a lot of the opportunities that we do here in the Bay Area. Can you also give us a sense of how, um, how, how interactors work together to, to take an interest in this, right? So, so you're doing this not simply because someone was like, you now must do this, that you obviously care about the issues, things like this, but how did that happen? How do, how do interactors get other teens passionate about the causes that are in something like this? Yeah, I think that's one of the best things about Interact. Um, it's the fact that we were a community that's dedicated to service. And because of that, a lot of uh, opportunities come out, a lot of uh, causes that we work on come up. And um, and because of that, we, we can get involved and passionate about many things. So uh, for District 5170, and I'm pretty sure other Interact districts as well, we have an international and community project every year. I think that's one of the biggest ways that uh, us as interactors, we come together and we support a cause. But then for projects like this, the Rotary Vietnam Project, I think is really unique in that we're, um, we are, road, we're both Rotarians and we're also interactors and we also have some in road reactors um, and we work together for this one cause. Uh, for me personally, I got involved in this because my club president introduced it to me and then I looked into it. And I was like, oh, this is a great, this is a great cause. So again, it's a lot of this community that I believe gets us really impassioned about different causes. Um, yeah. Afra, I think you have a question. Uh, like Rushton, Catherine, I'm really impressed that at your empathy, your concern for humanity at such a young age, and you're living in the Bay Area where not all teens are so concerned about people in other parts of the world who um, are not having the same access to resources like you do. So I'm, I'm just so incredibly impressed with you. And in the same vein of the question that Rushton asked, how do we get more youth to be engaged? I know that you said you've got a group going, you've got interactors, this was introduced to you by your president. I'm not in the South Bay, I'm in the East Bay San Ramon. How could I engage youth in this area, get them inclined to jump on something like this? 
Um, well, we've done outreach to other inner uh, to other districts, and 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 we'll go there. I mean, I've gone and presented to the Interact Club at the Oakdale High School in another district, and that resulted in two of those students coming to Vietnam mm -hmm. uh, with us eventually. And and Catherine is part of the international outreach. She has presented this this program to Rotary clubs in Guam. Rotary Clubs in Texas. And we just got a, it appears that we're about to get a grant that will help us take interactors to the Rotary International uh, Convention in Houston. So we get to meet, meet some of those Texas interactors and, and Rotarians that we've been talking to. And of course, thousands of other Rotarians that will attend the conference in Houston if that is able to take place and do so. So um, uh, Catherine, I'm very pleased to say, ha has uh, agreed to stay on with the Rotary Vietnam Project for next year in an officer position. And so with her past experience about the international outreach she's doing this year, I'm confident she's inspired to grow on that and uh, help us outreach to interactors Afra in your district and uh, anywhere we can. Awesome. Together we achieve more. It's absolutely. a team. That's, that's absolutely true. So, so I have a question for you, both you and Catherine. So you mentioned scholarships in the soccer. What type of economies are actually in Vietnam? So once they you know, obtain the education, what can they look to do once they obtain what they need to do? while they're in this program? We're teaching their families that education is a bigger return to the family, get the girl out of the rice paddy, give her an education so she can get a job. So Vietnam is strong in, uh, is strong in commercial agriculture and exports, um, textiles. Intel has made a very big investment in Vietnam. So uh, software development there, these are all things, and tourism. So that's where even if a girl can't go on to higher education, if she's got a decent command of English, and there are boys that come into the program too. It's predominantly girls, but also boys. If they can get a good command of English, they can be a local tour guide down in the Mekong Delta or up in the middle of the country. Uh, Pacific Links works throughout Vietnam. And having the chance to uh, speak with native English speakers through our online uh, English tutoring gives them that opportunity to participate in the tourist industry. Great questions, great content. Thank you both. And thanks everyone for, for taking part in this discussion. Uh, as, as we wind things down, let me say that I'm excited about our already looking ahead to the Houston conference next year. As some of you may know, Houston has one of the largest populations of Vietnamese Americans. And matter of fact, it may be the largest population of Vietnamese Americans in the United States. So it, it, it is a wonderful opportunity to get people involved there. Our, our own uh, Judge Rory might be uh, helpful in, in making some connections along those lines. For all of you who have been watching this, we thank you for joining us. Uh, every week we're trying to share stories that you will think to yourself, I got to share this with my club. Or you got to know about this. And so I hope that that's how you're feeling at the moment. Let us know you were here. There is a little section where you can say, I was here and put in your name and your email address. And doing so properly will generate an email that you can pass along to your club secretary to make up for a miss. Additionally, at the bottom of the page, there is the discuss forum. And we ask that you share what you thought of, of today's program and today's meeting. As you go through, you'll see all of the different content that we share, the inspirational video, the greeting from the president, the happy and sad dollars, the, the news from, from Rotary around the world. And we hope that, that you are seeing not just the possibilities of Rotary, but the personalities of our community as a part of attending this online asynchronous Rotary meeting. As we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for the final word. And today that'll be to you. Sue, I hand it back to you. Well, thank you very much. Um, I look forward to seeing the comments from other Rotarians and clubs that may view this program and invite you to reach out to uh, learn more and, and work with us. We, we'd love to hear from you.
thank you so much for this opportunity and this platform. Thank you both. And to everyone, we'll see you next week.